Oh, hi guys, thank you very much for clicking on the video. In this one, I drink rather hot tea. And we discuss how off the back end of Battlefield 2042 being an absolute shower of shit, could a smaller developer with a very similar game to the original Battlefield jump straight into its market? Right guys, uh, as I was saying, Battlefield 2042, for lack of better wording, has been an absolute joke of a release. With bugs, graphical issues, no real answers from the development team. It's a hard pill to swallow, especially for Battlefield fans. From EA and DICE, we kind of expect better. They have produced some amazing Battlefield titles in the past. This one misses not just only the mark, but it seems to miss the point entirely as to what the consumer wanted, i.e. us, in a Battlefield game. I heard they were making it a Battle Royale game and changed to more traditional Battlefield as a new the backlash would probably be horrendous. And this could be true, with the giant size of the maps and the hero style operators, it kind of makes sense. Now, we're gonna have a look at some numbers now. Right, so, um, numbers. Let's have a little look-see, shall we? So, this game released in, I think it was the 19th of November, um, for which we had 97,000 concurrent players. 100,590 on November the 20th. So just the day after it released, you had the old time peak, 100,000, okay? Now as we move along, there's peaks and troughs. Now I assume the peaks are probably where patches got brought out and updates to the game, they're trying to fix things, because let's face it, it was a buggy mess. But even on the 1st of December, so not even a month later, we are down to 30,000 concurrent players. And if I scroll all the way along to where we are now, you can see the peaks and troughs here. We are here now, and we are on this number here. 4,889 people playing. In the last 24 hours, there's been 10,064 people playing. Now you really have to ask yourself what the actual fuck has happened. That's a huge drop. Now, I'm going to put a tweet up on the screen now of a guy that works at EA called Andy McNamara. I'll bring it up now. Now, he said, let us get back from the break and get back to work. Love you guys, but these expectations are brutal. The things you want take time to scope, design and execute. And we get that. I understand that, Big Cheese. However, the things that we want was things that you've you've already done the game that we want numerous times we just wanted a modern day again you, you've done world wars and now we want a modern day battlefield you know how to do it you've done it before this isn't it it also said uh, back to work today check reddit and twitter and battlefield fans are pissed we didn't do enough updates or communication during a holiday break guys people gotta rest we have things in motion but we have to figure out what is possible we will address it when we are 100%. You already know how to make a Battlefield game. And I, I can't believe you, you're blaming <laughs> the consumer, the people that have given you money for a game that you didn't deliver on, and you're blaming them. You can, you can cough for that shit. That is the stupidest thing I've seen. Now, let's jump over to the Steam page for Battlefield 2042, and we'll see what's happening. Now, I do get that that is just the Steam charts that we've just seen, all right? So 4,800 players. And a lot of people may say you can get it through the EA launcher as well. But if you're on PC and you're a PC player, you get the game on Steam. You would. It's Everyone buys their games off Steam. That's, the, that's all I'm going to say about that. But that's basically the numbers for PC players. Now, the Steam page, uh, recent reviews, is mostly negative. So... As we scroll down, you've, you've charged people £100 for the Ultimate Edition. That includes the Year One Pass here. The only reason EA and DICE have to keep this going for a year is because of these guys. They've bought this game, they've paid for the Year One Pass, and they deserve the content for that year. After that, EA could, if they wanted to, just let the game die. And honestly, maybe they will. So we'll scroll down to the reviews here. As you can see, it's um, it's, pre it's pretty awful. You got uh, a liked here by one of my friends. I'm glad you all hate it. It means I've been playing with like-minded players. And that's a positive review. <laughs> so, everything here. Oh, you don't need to rage quit because your PC will rage quit for you. That's a positive review. 
every other one is negative. Oh, there's a positive here. Fun if you hate your life and love bugs, the Roblox Natural Disaster Survival Game has more destructive tornadoes. You don't need to rage quit because your PC will rage quit for you. People aren't happy and you can see why, okay? So because of this, there's a huge gap in the market. So I'm gonna flick over now and look at another game from a smaller developer called World War III. Right, World War III. This released in 2018 originally, and it was a paid for game. That was also a shit show of a release. They took it off, went back to the drawing board, and they're trying to push it out again and do a re-release. This time it's gonna be free to play. Free to play games do get a lot of people jumping on because let's face it, it's free. What's, what's it to lose? This releases soon, actually. It's currently in closed beta, so I wouldn't bother buying this yet because you're only going to be in the closed beta for a month or so before they release it for free anyway. Now, we'll have a look at the trailer together because it's quite cool, and then I'll have a quick talk. As you can see there, sorry, I will pause it and just to talk over it, but he's got a little iPad out and he's dropped a vehicle in. So the, in this game you get, it's like a mix between card and battlefield in a way. So you get points, the better you play, the more people you kill, points you capture, etc. Those points you can use as like kill streaks. You can drop in tanks, vehicles, airstrikes, etc, etc. So it's got a little bit of both and it's actually quite fun. Weapon customization in this game is pretty off the chain, if I'm honest. So there's a lot you can do. You can change every attachment on your rifle. You can customize it. You can color it a different color. So your scope could be a different color to your rifle or your, you know, your, your four stock or your grip. And they all get unlocked through progressing in the game. As it's free to play, they do have to make money somehow. So I'm pretty sure there will be things you can buy. But they have said it will not affect the gameplay at all because metic stuff, which is fine because to keep the game going, they need to make the money. The weapon customization in this game is good. However, the sound is dog shit. But we'll uh, we'll move on. Looks alright, doesn't it? it? Does look alright. There's your strikes and your vehicles, and like I said, you can get these uh, through your rewards. There are a couple of maps, and if I'm honest, they're all pretty damn detailed. Uh, they do look war torn. There is damage. There is litter all over the floor. It looks, it looks pretty good. And as I said earlier, the the only thing letting this down really is the sound. The sound is awful. In 2018, when it first released, the sound was better. I don't know what they've done. It's like they've recorded them all in a toilet somewhere, but the sound, the sound needs worked on. And if they, if they get the sound right, then I think there's that gap in the market from how Battlefield messed up. This is gonna be free to play. A lot of Battlefield fans may find this game to be the one that they actually want to play. 
but time will tell. It releases soon. Don't buy it yet because it is soon. You don't need to be in the closed beta. Just wait and we'll see how they progress with the sound quality and if they can push this out to be a stable release um, that people are going to enjoy. That's all from me. I'm going to leave you with some footage of Battlefield 2042 and some from World War 3. If you got any comments about either of these games, please drop them in the comment box below. Let me know what you think about these two games and I'll, I'll catch you next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more.